Excuse me. Hi, whereabouts would I find the wine kiosk, please? Oh, just over there? Thanks. So I've just arrived at one of two pilot machines that are in two large supermarkets in, the, uh, in and around the state capital of Pennsylvania. And it's quite a large machine, I have to say. It's sandwiched between the cheese area and the tea section. My name is PJ Stapleton. I'm the chairman of the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board. And we are the entity in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania that is tasked with selling all wine and spirits. In our uh, endeavor to uh, make our business more consumer friendly, We've uh, brought these wine kiosks to the market in the hopes that we'll be able to roll out a, a hundred of these in September. So where do people have to buy their wine and liquor now? We have 620 stores uh, across the state. So anybody who wants to purchase wine or spirits must purchase from one of those 620 stores. We recognize that there are convenience issues with that, and one way that we're attempting to address that is with the wine kiosks. Probably most importantly, we think it works from the standpoint of protecting us from sales to minors and sales to inebriated people. The breathalyzer test takes about 15 seconds and it's akin to blowing out a candle on a birthday cake. Touch the screen to begin. There's reds on the left side and whites on the right side. I'm a fan of Sauvignon Blanc. There's a button here that says, it says finish and pay. So I'm going to put my ID in now. I'm going to put the credit card down. I've got my New York State driver's license here. Please insert ID card. Oh, it says we're sorry, but we're unable to process the card. Welcome to the wine kiosk. How may I help you? Hi there. Yes, I just tried to buy a bottle of wine with my New York State driver's license, and it's uh, not accepting it. Cancel out of anything that's there. The kiosks are manned remotely from Liquor Board HQ and sales monitored by camera. A member of staff steps in to try and retrieve my bottle, but there's no escaping the breathalyzer. Please take a deep breath and blow firmly into the breath alcohol sensor. Thank you. Tense moment. Your receipt is printing. Your bottles are in the cabinets indicated by the flashing image. Look for the light oh, yeah, or that, the door. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's which one's oh, the lights. Oh, okay. okay. They're, they're working on getting the lights to flash. What do you think of it? It's pretty cool. She wants to take the whole machine home. Yeah, the whole machine. Absolutely. Only after a couple of bottles, we shouldn't have to breathe into the machine <laughs> anymore. <laughs> the machine's very sensitive, apparently. If you've had a glass of wine even three hours ago, it'll refuse to serve you. Oh, really? really? So you're pretty sure it'll catch on around the state? Oh, I think so. It should. I mean, I, you know, everybody's talking about it. Do you think that the strict controls that there are on alcohol in the state does help solve problems like underage drinking? I mean, is, it, is it a good no. thing? I would guess that if you were in Pennsylvania or a state that's not as controlled, I wouldn't think there's any difference in the amount of kids that drink. The state makes $1.8 billion in revenue. And that trumps our belief in, you know, free market, obviously. Keith Wallace runs a Philadelphia-based wine school, and he's sick of Puritanism interfering with his passion. He thinks the kiosks are just another distraction from the sinister status quo. You actually have to swipe your, your personal identification, look in this camera so that a representative of the government can identify you. That's just silly. Who in the world thinks that an 18 or 17 or 15-year-old kid is going to go to a wine kiosk and buy a bottle of Cabernet Sauvignon. But back at the kiosk, Chairman Stapleton insists he's no big brother. We're very proud of our capitalist culture here, but uh, the sale of wine and spirits is a little bit different than the sale of donuts and, uh, and loaves of bread. Uh, we're doing the best job we can, and we'll let the, the, the political and the philosophical debate for the, for the politicians.